Yes, it is a bonanza for Bellator MMA fans. You've been doing this for nearly 30 years. Have you ever been this busy? Well, I tell you, this is a very busy schedule for us. And really, it's a testament to our TV deal with Showtime, who airs all these amazing fights. I'd like to thank Steven Espinoza, thank David Nevins. But really, it's a testament to how far this roster has come. This roster is unbelievable now. We've been building this roster for the last five, six years since I've been here. And now, to me, it's the best roster we've had. It's been the, some of the best roster in all of MMA. And we look at these tournaments we've been throwing. They're stacked. These fight cards have been stacked. And we were going to put on five fights, like I said, five world title fights or in, in three events. It's, it's a very busy time for Bellator. And while we adore our California love, home base San Jose returning there Friday, I got to say, having been a part of it across boxing, pro wrestling, and, and MMA, something special about those international crowds, especially in Europe. We talked about going back to Paris and London and announcing a return to Dublin. Any other market internationally that we are going to uh, go to in 2022? Well, like you said, we're going back to Paris, May 6th, May 13th, London, Dublin. And we're talking to Saki Gibara. Uh, maybe at the end of the year, we might have something in Japan. Do another co-promotion like we did in 19, which was very successful for both parties. But uh, next year, we're going to have a, a brand new slate of international territories, which I don't want to get into now. But this is not a local, just domestic brand. Bellator is an international brand. We have fights all over the world. We're aired in 160 countries, and we're crushing it internationally at all these gates and all these television deals that we have, BBC, Virgin. We just uh, signed uh, a, a new deal in, uh, in Italy. We signed a new deal in Southeast Asia. Mamma mia. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's just, you know, it's rolling, and I feel really good about it. I feel really good about where we're headed, and this is just the beginning, Wow. Wow. Uh, you know, it's interesting because you and I have been working together for many years. We have a a big fondness for what goes on in the land of the rising sun. You were inspired by the K-1 and Pride Fighting Championships World Grand Prix. You've made them a staple of your promotional tenure in Strike Force and here in Bellator MMA. And over the next couple of weeks, we conclude the $1 million light heavyweight World Grand Prix this Friday in San Jose. Vadim Nemkov defending the title against Corey Anderson. And the following weekend in Hawaii, we will begin the Bellator Bantamweight World Grand Prix. And yes, Sergio Pettis, defending champion, he is out with an injury. We have, of course, the replacement fight here. Number one ranked contender Juan Archuleta has joined us. Number three ranked contender Rafion Stotts. But it really speaks to the depth of the division that you were able to uh, seamlessly continue with this Grand Prix. Yeah, injuries are always an, an issue from time to time in this business or... You know, it's fighting, it's, it just happens, things get uh, heavy in training and people get hurt. But when you look at this Bantamweight division, honestly, we have so much depth in this division. Felt really good. We got a couple of wild cards on Friday, which will be uh, not this Friday, but the following Friday in Hawaii. It's a free show for the military, the first responders, lifeguards. Please come to the Blaisdell Arena. You guys will be admitted for free. Just show your ID. And uh, we have the wild card fights. Whoever wins those fights will go into our June 24th event, and they will be into the tournament. But uh, we've got a great lineup of tournament fights coming up, and uh, I'm really excited. It's going to be a good show. All right. Well, obviously want to thank all of the members of our esteemed media for being here today. And, of course, thank these great fighters on stage. And without further ado, want to get to Bellator 279 as we will return to Hawaii. Not this weekend, but next weekend. And the main event will be Chris Cyborg, the legendary Brazilian fighter who is perfect 4-0 with three knockouts and a submission in her Bellator MMA tenure as the featherweight champion. And she will defend against the number one one ranked Arlene Blenko and Arlene don't worry I'm not going to subject you to cruel and unusual punishment by singing happy birthday but I will wish you a happy birthday today Arlene's 39th birthday and happy birthday to you on behalf of all of us here at Bellator MMA Chris I want to start with you it was against Blenko that you recorded the first submission win of your legendary career at this stage of your incredible career how many more firsts are you looking forward to you know, I really trained really hard. Thank you for everyone be here. And you know, I always want to go to step to the octagon. I want to be the show and make the show, make the best fights for the people and uh, encourage other girls to be a fighter too. So, you know, I, I was the first fight we had together. You know, I was planning to get a sub for a submission. We really trained really hard for that. Uh, but maybe this way is going to be a different way. <laughs> How, what keeps you hungry? 
I mean, here you are uh, having conquered every promotion that you've been in, still at the top of your game, obviously have someone who would love revenge, but what keeps you hungry at this stage of your career? You know, a lot of people are asking me the same question. Well, For thank me, you. I'd like I, to do it too. Yes, I, you know, I, I love to fight. And, and then another thing, I always want to be the champion, yes, but to be the champion of people's hearts for me is the most important. Because the belt maybe I hold today, maybe I'm not going to hold tomorrow, but in the, the people's hearts I'm going to be the champion. So I like to continue share my faith, continue help the community, continue promoting my event in Brazil and they open the door for another fighters. So this is motivated every day. When I step in the cage, I just you know step in cyborg, step in bringing my team, step in people around the world that help and... And yes, I continue having my heart to fire. I'm continuing going to fight. Awesome. Arlene, again, happy birthday to you. Obviously, no need to ask you what you want for your birthday. But what changes, what adjustments have you been ma uh, making knowing that you do get another opportunity at becoming a champion? Um, I just want that belt. Um, basically, whenever I'm fighting a fighter that's ranked below me, I bring a mongrel to the cage. I don't let them take my ranking. And, and that's the same mongrel that I've got to take into the cage next weekend. I want that belt. I've been, wanting, I've been chasing that belt for five years now. This is my third attempt. And um, yeah, I've just got to bring the mongrel to the cage and, and take the belt from the champion. That's what I've got to do. What is it like facing someone like Chris Cyborg, who will go down as one of the greatest of all time? It's, it's what I've chased my whole career. Chris has been at the, at the top. Her name's been there. It's a fight that I've always wanted. So the fact that um, I get to rematch her and, and get another run at it, um, it, yeah, this is the pinnacle of my career. Taking that belt um, on the 23rd and becoming the Bellator World Champion is the pinnacle of my career. Um, nothing will be bigger than that. Fighting Chris Cyborg and beating her and becoming the Bellator World Champion is the pinnacle. Winner of five no, over the last six, <laughs> looking to bring the thunder from down under. Go ahead, Chris. No, I'm ready. I'm oh. ready for this weekend. <laughs> this weekend I'm ready. I'm awesome. Ready. Well, I know two other fighters who are ready with the Bellator Bantamweight World Grand Prix on deck beginning in Hawaii one week. Well, two weeks from now, actually. Juan Archuleta, number one contender. You defeated Patchy Mix for the vacant Bantamweight title. Were dethroned by Sergio Pettis in your first defense, and now you replace Pettis in the Bantamweight Grand Prix. You're always going to be in the grade eight, but now you're taking the champion spot against a guy who's won nine straight in Rafion Stotts. Talk about this opportunity and talk about what it's like to face a guy like Stotts. Well, we can hear it right now. The sirens are glaring, <laughs> right? Cute. Like they're, I'm cute. He, he already called the cops because he already knows he's in trouble. So it looks like I'm about to get arrested. But uh, no, um, I'm very honored. You know, one man's loss, unfortunately, coming into this sport is another man's gain. And that's what this opportunity presents, you know, staying ready, being ready. Uh, since the moment I lost my title, I've been itching to get it back, you know. And uh, to have this opportunity, I'm truly grateful to fight in Hawaii in front of a crowd that is the fighting Hawaiian. You know, that's it's it's going to be. It's, it's going to be fireworks come fight night. Rafion, I know you weren't very pleased with the original matchup, knowing that you would take on a teammate of Rufus Sport in the champion, Sergio Pettis. Obviously, you're not pleased that he's now injured and out for could be up to nine months. Talk about what the emotional roller coaster that you've had to, to go on just getting ready for this tournament. Man, so it started out like you're fighting in Hawaii. So I'm like, yeah, let's go. Like, I got to fight, you know. Uh, then it's like, okay, you're fighting for the title. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. You know, I got to fight uh, my homie Sergio. So it's like, uh, it's, it's definitely bittersweet. You know, I feel for Sergio. You know, he's, he's definitely the true champion. But um, I'm super excited, you know, now. You know, it, it went from down to like, dang, it sucks, Sergio. To fighting somebody I don't really care for and Juan Archuleta, you know, I feel like he's an excuse machine. So I get to, you know, shut, shut or punch him in the excuse machine in his mouth. So I'm, I'm super excited to do that. And um, I'm super excited to be here. Question for Chris. Um, Chris, when you have such a great performance against Arlene the first time around, just how do you, what do you approach in the gym in terms of how you're going to take this rematch and what you want to do out there and accomplish? No, I believe like a rematch, you have to work harder. You know, I know sometimes because you win the refight, you feel comfortable. I'm not. I'm training really hard for keep that belt. And, you know, the fight when I fight her, I feel comfortable in, st in strike. But, you know, I have to go to the ground. And while we recovered, I, I, she felt my punch. I saw that her face. So I believe you have a lot of options to the fight. I just have, I have three, five rounds to finish the fight. So just have a patient and see the moment, the time right. And that's it.
for Arlene. Just how do you approach this one? Obviously, you go back to the gym, you go back to the lab, you know you have things you need to change when you approach the rematch. Can you just talk a little bit about the preparation and how you take that experience now? Yeah, I had an awesome preparation the first time around. Um, you know, I've got great coaches back in Australia, great coaches here in America at Jackson Wink. Um, I've just spent the last four weeks there. I'll finish a five-week fight camp over there. Um, yeah, it's, honestly, my coaches have said it my whole career. I've, I've always got had what, it's take, like what it takes to be the champion. And it really, it's just the belief in myself. And um, I've grown a lot over the past few years. Um, my past two performances have shown that. It's just every time I get in the cage, I'm a better fighter. And, um, you know, that's what the commentators say too with the fights. Um, I'm, yeah, getting better and better. And like I said just before, this is the pinnacle of, the career, of my career. So it's, I need to show up on the night and um, perform. That's what I've got to do. For Rafian, just can you talk a little bit about the change in opponents and how your preparation changed going from Sergio to now Juan? Um, yeah, so I feel like Sergio is definitely my toughest opponent that I can face. You know, I've been with him for years, and I know, you know, what he, what he puts into it. He knows what I put into it. We know where our strengths lie. Um, where it comes to Juan Archuleta, I feel like there's a change, and just because um, – I mean, I don't know a lot about him, you know, or I mean, I don't know a lot about him personally, but I know that um, he's he, he's not a person that seeks out a fight, you know what I mean? I feel like he's a person who kind of tries to find his way around, um, you know, uh, uh, being in like a real fight. So um, I, I'm excited to like bring a fight to him, you know what I mean? I'm excited to to just, just be in there with him and like make him feel my presence, you know what I mean? Um, so that's why I feel like the, the preparation kind of differs. Uh, I feel like technically I'm better than him. I feel like um, uh, I'm, I'm stronger, I'm faster. Uh, but also we get to see, we get to find out on a fight. Wait, like I don't know for sure, you know, and that's like what's fun for me. I get to find out like, uh, are you real or not? You know, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out real soon. My final question for Scott Coker. You obviously mentioned the possibility of co-promoting with Ryzen later this year. Have there been any talks with any other companies about the possibility of co-promotion this year? Uh, no, just, uh, you know, Ryzen, we've done uh, a couple, two or three fights in Japan with Saki Ibarra. But he's somebody that I've known, you know, since the Young Pride. And I had Strike Force, and we worked together, sent fighters back and forth. So there's a certain amount of trust there. And, uh, you know, once a year we talked about doing something big. Uh, and I think that uh, we're going to try our best to make it happen. Again, I'm going to meet him in Hawaii in two weeks, and we're going to have a sit down and you know, see if we can put it together. Question back here. Yeah, Juan, you were saying, Juan, back here, uh, you were saying that since you lost the title, you've been itching to get back, but you have a chance to win a million bucks, too. So I'm curious, what is more of your motivation, winning the big money or getting the rematch with Sergio? Thanks for your question. Yeah, man, I mean... I've been off for since June, right, and uh, been knocking on the door for a fight. Nothing presented itself until the Grand Prix got brought up, and you know it's it was a uh, it, it's awesome because now not only do I get to fight and fight a guy that's you know obviously hates me, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I get to go and win win my title back and then run through the division again and fight the true champ and def defend the belt against Sergio and let him know that that first fight was a mistake and, his, and you know, his, my losses were his, was his gain. Uh, you know, there's already been a little bit of trash talk at the, the dais, you know, saying that you're an excuse machine and that you, you evade a fight. Did you know that there was any of this bad blood already? You know, where did that come from and how does that motivate you more knowing that, uh, you know, there's a little bit of blood going on there? Yeah, I think that's just insecurities on his part, which is all good, you know, and then, uh, I didn't know. I mean, I, I, excuse me, you know, I have no idea what he's talking about to begin with. Uh, you could ask Scott Coker up here, anyone he's put in front of me. I've, I've signed the contract and I've never asked for any other fight besides the one he's presented to me. And I've signed it every dotted line that he's given to me. Scott, you guys haven't traditionally done a whole lot of interim titles. I know there was the, the heavyweight recently. But what was the reasoning behind putting an interim title in this tournament? You know, when we think about um, Pettis' situation, I mean, he's going to be out for maybe nine months to a year, right? That means that uh, the bell will be frozen. And we told these guys this is going to be five-round fights and the, the title is going to continue. So we said, look, we're going to make this an interim title fight. And then that will continue on. And then whoever's the interim title at the end that wins the million dollars will fight Sergio Pettis probably the first quarter of next year. And the last time you guys went to Hawaii, there was actually a little bit of an issue with the timekeeper in the commission. Has all that been straightened out? There was a fight that was actually affected by uh, poor timekeeping uh, 
in the prelims. And I'm curious if you guys have the ability to make sure that there's no oversight next time around with the commission. Well, I, I do know that uh, there's a new commission there, and uh, we'll definitely have a conversation with them about that. But uh, I wasn't aware of that situation, but uh, we'll look into it. Yeah, it was the French fighter, Pierre de Gouzon. The, okay. the round was actually started late, and they only fought about three minutes in the first round. So. Oh, what's going on? I had a question for Cyborg. Um, fifth fight in the promotion. You're now going through another rematch. Um, you're, you're almost like lapping the division again. How do you stay motivated at the top going through these fights time and time again when everybody else in the division is coming for you constantly? No, I really love my job. And then when you love your job, it don't work, you know. And I like to train. I look, like to do my best, too, in the, in the, in the ring. And it just, it, you know, be ready for any, any, any people, you know, Scott Coker put in my face. Doesn't matter going to be rematched. Doesn't matter going to be a new person. But I came to Bellator because I have a lot of girls in my division. And because this, I'm here. Uh, the next question is for Arlene. You're fighting one of the top pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the sport. How do you get in there and give your best performance on the night? Well, that's what I've been working on the last two years. Um, I've trained, um, I've prepared, and yeah, like I said, I've just got to show up on the night. Um, we've worked on a lot of things um, to fix the mistakes I made in the last fight. But yeah, basically just get in there on the night and fight my heart out. And um, yeah, really just show everyone how, how much I want that belt. Um, that was the big thing. It's just, yeah, when you're in there, you kind of, you, you, not so much forget, but yeah, I want to fight, fight hard for the belt. I'm bring it home. Uh, next question for, for Ravion here. You were scheduled to fight your teammate first round of the Grand Prix. I bet that was a bit of a bittersweet moment. Now you have a fight against Juan, like you said. You don't really have any, 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 any do, do you have any beef with him? I'll say that more. I don't, I don't necessarily have beef with, I don't know the dude. Like he's up here with moccasins and a um, poncho on. I don't know the dude. I don't know nothing about him, you know what I mean? But that's like easier for me to fight somebody like that. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm sure he's a good guy. I don't hate him, but like I would like to fight him. Like I really want to fight him because I don't I don't know him. And like it's exciting to me to fight somebody I don't know. Yeah. I will say this, Juan, you have the drip on right now currently. <laughs> Do you believe you are the best dressed fighter in Bellator? Always. I mean, look at Rufion. <laughs> he's trying to copy my style. So from two, three years ago, no shirt on, uh, try to unbutton his shirt. He's copying my style. Taco he meat, wants brother. to be it's taco me. Meat. He's I gotta trying to taco meat be me, right? So I have to switch it up. You got to switch it up. You got to always throw different curveballs when you're in the game. I appreciate the drip. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate <laughs> it. Hey, uh, so my first question is for you, Chris. Um, how much uh, does your religious belief uh, continue to push you to, to fight? If I feel my heart, if I feel my heart, I might continue to fight. And I'm going to continue to fight. And I like to share. I think everyone, when I fight, I like to touch your hearts and make the difference I'm at. Bring the light to the darkness. This is my goal. Thank you. And then for you, Arlene, uh, just what do you take from that first fight that you know that you need to fix that you can carry uh, on to this fight? I need to win. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, Basically, yeah, um, like I answered with the other questions, I, I know what I've got to do when I get in there. It's kind of, I've actually um, haven't really done too many interviews or spoken much about this fight because it's kind of like you get over having to talk about it. I don't want to be talking about it. I want to show my actions. I want to get in there. So, yeah, it's kind of hard. Like, you become one of those people like, oh, I'm going to get in there. I'm going to, I'm going to throw it down hard. I'm going to knock her out, blah, blah, blah. But, like, it kind of sounds silly. Like, just, yeah, come and watch on the 23rd. And, um, yeah, I want to show, show everyone what we've been working on. Yes, everybody have a plan. A, B, C, but first punch, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Question right here for Rofian. Um, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to expand on, quote, excuse machine. What did you mean by that? Because that's the one thing that seemed to uh, bug Juan a little bit. Man, if I go through on my Instagram, I got a freaking uh, video of uh, somebody asking, Pretty much, I offered up to fight Juan uh, before the tournament even started, before we knew about the tournament, and um, I offered to, to fight him in lieu of, uh, or before getting the title. Like, he was the number one contender, but I had just beat Magomed. I figured I was uh, for the title next. I didn't know anything about the tournament, and I just, uh, I, I called him out to fight, pretty much, you know? And, um, and the first excuse he gave was, um, I, I didn't have enough fights. Like, oh, this guy's only got two or three fights in the uh, Bellator. I had five fights. I, you know, um, the, the, the next excuse he gave was that he spends too, much, 
too much money on um, his camp. He spends $50,000 on his camp, so he can't fight me because he spends that much money. Then the third excuse was that I, I, fought, I fight too often. You know, I had, then he was like, you, you want me to fight a guy that want, I, look on my Instagram, it's like literally like, excuse after excuse so that's the only reason and that's that's why i'm coming at him like i'm coming at him because like you know i'm like i'm in here to, to fight the toughest guys and i feel like he was like running from me from a long time because i didn't have the title i feel like the only reason he's fighting me now is because he can fight for a title so he has like an out like oh, i'm i'm fighting for a championship you know what i mean but i want to I, I i fight him you know what i mean uh with, without I, I i i chose to try to fight him before or to even like to 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 forego my my championship opportunity, you know what I mean? So that's that's where it's coming from. Um, that sounds like what? an excuse to not fight your teammate who has the belt. If I'm wrong or not? I yeah, mean, you you right. It sounds I like I you don't, don't want the title fight. So I said, if you're not fighting for the title and you have the opportunity to be number one, because I just came off a loss and you don't want the title fight, I'll take the title fight more than willingly. I, again. Scott Cooker's right here. You could ask him, have I ever turned down a fight that you have given me on a contract? And the answer will be no. I didn't, have, I I didn't say you turned I've, down I've, a fight. I've, 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 I've I taken said... fights that are number one contenders. I continue to be a reputable, reputable fighter and fight whoever they put in front of me without asking. Again, of course I'm going to sign the dotted line because they sent me a contract and saying, hey, you're fighting Rufion instead of Magomedov. So guess what? I signed the contract and I sent it right back in. So... I don't get the excuse okay. machine. Well, no, well, this is the last thing I'll say, okay? And I feel like that's where me and him differ, okay? I feel like I go out and I'm seeking out fights. I'm, I am I enjoy fighting. He's he's like accepting what they, you know, if if hopefully they don't they, they don't offer me the fight, you know, and I won't take it. I, I go out and I seek things that I want, you know what I mean? I, I want to fight everybody in the division, so I want to fight him. I want to fight every single person in this uh, but Grand Sergio. Prix. Say it again. But Sergio. But I, I agree to fight Sergio. I don't want to fight Sergio because I know him. He's my boy. And he has a title in the division. And he's it, the number one guy yeah, in the division. I don't, yeah, I don't want to fight, fight my him. boy, but so I'll fight what? for now the title. Now we're fighting. True. We're fighting now, so we get to sell it. To, to, his, to his point, um, Juan, did you feel like maybe uh, he was beneath you before this interim time? No, not at all. Rufion's a great opponent, right? He came in. I was hyped up when they signed him, Magomedov, uh, Josh Hill, uh, all the guys that they just brought. I mean, that's why we're doing this band point tournament, right? Like, uh, I want the best in the division. And if it's not this division, I'll go up to the next division. If it's not that division, I'll go up to the next one. I've done it time and time in my career, and I'm going to continue to do it time and time in my career. I'm the best MMA fighter in the world right now, and I'm approved it come fight night thank you guys we'll do one or two more uh, my question is for chris um there have been two names that have kind of surrounded you for a p potential fight kat zingano and kayla harrison do you feel like they both ducked you maybe after only our fight there arlene Blanco, we can ask this question i think you're all the light for us now in two weeks thank you any last questions oh. scott uh let me ask you something please Bellator is getting bigger in Brazil every day. Do you have any plan, any any other plans to bring uh, bring Bellator to Brazil soon? Uh, the answer to that is yes. yes. More news coming. Chris, how does it sound for you? This is kind of my dream coming true. You know, I want to fly home. It's nice, and the people, the crowd, very nice, and they're going to be great. Yes. Yeah, you know, this was something that we were on our way to Brazil and even Mexico to start promoting fights. Uh, but we stopped because the COVID situation, we went into the Morgan Sun, did all the fights internally in the building there with no audience. But we would already be in Brazil uh, working with Chris and her promotion if uh, COVID didn't hit. 